time. Dear Lord and Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord God, uh, for this tithe and offering that we're about to collect, oh God. We just pray, Father, that, uh, Lord, it will be uh, received, oh God, as an act of our worship, oh God, and our praise and our thanksgiving, oh God. Bless, Lord God, this offering, Lord God. Bless each person that can give and those that cannot give, God, a double portion of your blessing, Lord Jesus, on them. Lord, we ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Ushers, you may come. Well, I wanted to uh, talk about something. You know, I, I, I consider folks that come out regularly on Tuesday, I call them our, our, uh, our prayer warriors. You ever heard that term, prayer warrior? Um, you won't find it in Scripture, but you'll find allusions to the fact that uh, our battle is on our knees and in prayer. That's why uh, this meeting is more important, actually, than Sunday. Because if we just met on Sunday and we have service and we don't take time to pray as a church and as a people, then our faith would be kind of, uh, I don't know, if we don't pray and speak to God, what is it that we're doing anyway? We do pray some on Sunday, but Tuesday is a focus night where we can uh, focus in on um, connecting with God in that way and praying and believing God for some wonderful things. But uh, a lot of uh, what we go through uh, defines us more as instead of a worry, a warrior, a warrior. How many here are uh, warriors or in the warriors club? Raise your hand. There are things in this world, and there's a lot of things to worry about. How many say amen? amen. And if you uh, manage to glean yourself off of the terrible news that's on TV every night, how many know that it's never good news? Right? So I pretty much, you know, stopped listening to it because I know, you know, here's the forecast for tomorrow. It's bad. But there's still, even if you don't listen to that, there's still the challenge of all the things that are going on in your daily life. There are so many things to worry about that if you don't grab a hold of yourself and do something different, it will consume you, and it will even affect your health in an adverse way. How many know what I'm talking about? I was curious about the things that, uh, you know, studies have shown that people worry about, and here are the five top things this is just people in general. Number one was money. People worry about money, their debt, paying the mortgage, paying the rent. I know you guys don't worry about that, right? That was, uh, seemed to be the number one uh, worry uh, of people. And then second was health. You know, how am I feeling? Is some dreaded disease going to get a hold of me or a hold of my loved one? Number three was interesting, is getting older. How many realize that you're getting older? <laughs> How many know there's no stopping it? <laughs> you know, I was, uh, I, I was with a, a pastor, and uh, he was talking about how uh, he loves to run. And, you know, he has multiple services, and after that, he goes out and runs. I have no idea how he does that, okay? I am, I'm impressed. But he got involved in a conversation with a young man that was on the worship team, and they were comparing notes about how they run. And, uh, you know, uh, the pastor actually was running farther and longer, and they got into this whole long conversation, and there was a room full of people that were about to be involved in the service. And I was just quietly listening, and then I just broke in at a certain point, and I said, you do know, right, that no matter how far and how long you run, we're all going to die. <laughs> and the room just came to a complete silence. They <laughs> looked at me and they started to laugh because it's true, isn't it? We, are, uh, we cannot stop the aging process. And even if you thought you could stop the aging process, you might uh, 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 walk out of this building and get hit by a brick that falls off the side. Is this a brick building? No, it's not. A piece of metal. <laughs> but it's interesting that uh, we worry about that. Work stress is something 
that you worry about. You know, I, sometimes I, 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 I joke with my wife, you know, when things get, when there's a lot of things going on in the church. And how many know there's a lot of things that you do that you can't park at 5 o'clock uh, in, you know, in the day and then go home and forget about it. A lot of jobs are like that. This is a vocation that I do. Obviously, I carry it with me 24-7. But sometimes, you know, like at Christmas time, I see, you know that little train that goes around the mall and picks up the kids? I told my wife, that's what I want to do. I want to drive that little train <laughs> and just worry about making sure to toot the horn, you know. I need that sometimes, just going around the mall, toot, toot. And I park my train at the end of the day, and that's it. I go home and go to sleep. Anybody ever fantasize like that? That's my fantasy, to drive one of those choo-choo trains. Work stress. And then number five was gaining weight. Obviously, I don't have to uh, worry about that with my slim uh, disposition here. But, but the, a study showed that the average person worries uh, about five things a day. About five things a day. One in six people worry about ten things a day. And 18% of all people worry all the time. That's what a study has done, and by some of the reactions, I think some of that 18% is here in this room that worry all the time. But as Christians, we should have stopped worrying the minute that we realized that we went from death to life. How many say amen? amen. From living in darkness to coming into the light. I want to read, obviously, the passage of Scripture that you know about worry, because uh, as I was reading it today, I noticed that it had um, not only telling us not to worry, but it had the process of going from worrier to warrior. So I want to take it apart a little bit and, and discover how we could move from worry to being a spiritual warrior. Amen? In Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 and 7, it says like this, Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything that we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. But as you know, uh, I, I've learned to quote this verse when the five things that I worry about every day, according to the study, comes to my mind. Do you know that I can worry myself into a lather just from the drive from my house to here if I start thinking about the things that I normally worry about. or think They're real things. They're not made-up things, right? Obviously, if you have an issue and a problem or if your finances are such that you're struggling, it's not that you're uh, making it up. Those are real things that happen. But how many know is what Jesus said? Uh, to, to spend brain juice worrying about it does exactly what? Like, for example, if you're worried about getting old, what are you going to do with that? Where are you going with that, right? It, it, in other words, it will just do a lot of damage. So a lot of times when I start thinking about something or something slips into my mind, and I norm, in my normal course of the day think of something that I need to do or something that's hanging over me, I will start to feel that worry thing, and then I'll start quoting this verse. Don't worry about anything, every, anything, but pray about everything. Make your petitions known to God and all of that, and I'll repeat it as often as I have to. How many know that as long as you are a Christian, you will not graduate from worrying? You have to battle this, right? That's why I'm bringing it up. And if you're a worrier, you'll never be a warrior. So this is very important, or you'll never be a good warrior. Here's what we're supposed to be. Zechariah 10.5 says this. This is our goal. Together they will be like warriors in battle, trampling their enemy into the mud of the streets. They will fight because the Lord is with them. How many say amen? amen. And they will put the enemy horsemen to shame. Not only will you win, but you'll put the enemy to shame. That's the kind of warrior 
that I want to be. Let's look at our key passage of Scripture to learn how to go from warrior to a spiritual warrior. Number one is obvious. Pray. That's why we're here tonight. Philippians 4, 6, the first part says, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about how much? About everything. That's literal. In other words, pray about everything. Tell God everything. This is, so it should be your first response. Not calling Aunt May or Uncle Charlie. You have an Aunt May? <laughs> not calling up your friend. Not uh, trying to figure it out. Not going on the internet to try to solve your problem. But pray about everything. What is your problem? Is your problem uh, a financial God is Jehovah Jireh? our provider. Is your problem physical? God is Jehovah Rapha, our healer. Is your problem that you're down? Is your problem that uh, uh, somebody did something to you? God is the answer to, to all through Jesus Christ. How many say amen? Here's the thing. If it's somebody that's messing with you, pray. There's one place in the entire universe where you can talk about somebody and you won't be gossiping. How many know? It's pray. Because if you're praying and you're talking about somebody and you're being wrong about it, guess what will happen? God will straighten you right out. So, so go to him with your complaints, with everything that you have, if it's somebody, tell on people. I tell on people to God. How many, how many tell, tell on people? God's not going to hurt them. He's not going to get them for you. He's going to straighten you out, to be, to be honest with you. He'll let you. Go ahead, go ahead. Tell me. What? What did he do? Okay. And he did that. And what did you do in response? Because I say, if somebody slaps you on the cheek, what should you do? If someone steals your shirt, what should you do? If someone forces you to walk a mile, what should you do? Now, what was your complaint? You see, but we have to go to God, because if not, we'll go to somebody else. And we'll mess them up along with us, and then there'll be two of us messed up. Right? So tell God everything. Listen to what Ephesians 6.18 says. And pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. So a spiritual warrior, according to this passage of Scripture, prays in the Spirit. What, did that, what does that mean, to pray in the Spirit? It's not some spooky thing. It's, it's not you going on a rant on a mantra, saying or repeating the same thing. Praying in the Spirit is actually praying to God from your heart. How many know the difference between a prayer and a prayer? I, I, I've been involved with all, and I can hear, and I, you know, I, I, I tell about the time um, when I was uh, uh, summoned to the hospital, somebody that I was uh, close to had passed away, and the family knew that I was closest closest person. I didn't know the family, and they asked me if I would come and pray with them. It was, you know, a pretty serious situation. And when I got there, the, the, the chaplain of the hospital was there. And, you know, I guess he was uh, high church or something because he started to pray, and I was impressed. You know, I, I was looking for my pocket dictionary to try to understand what he was saying. He was saying, you know, Lord of the third heaven and highest of all, with the throne room in gold encased with the, you know, and he's going on and on. I'm going, oh, man, because I knew I had to pray next. You know, and you ever, you ever see somebody praying like that, and you got to pray next, and all you have is Brooklynese? I'm from Brooklyn, New York. What am I going to say? You know, so I'm sweating bullets. I said, oh, man, this you know, oh, God, you got to help me here. So he, you know, and he was doing the toe thing, you know. <laughs> that helps you get up, you know. <laughs> oh, nice. 
<clears throat> but to be honest with you, I, I don't mean to make fun of anybody, but the, the honest thing is that <clears throat> he did pray like that, and it was like a refrigerator in that room. <clears throat> and then when he was done, we just held hands, <clears throat> and I began to ask God to, to come and comfort those family members. <clears throat> they weren't looking for a fancy prayer from me. They didn't need any prayer from me. You know what they needed? They needed contact with God. They needed to sense the presence of God. They needed the Holy Spirit, who is the comforter, Amen. to come and minister to them. What could I do? All I could do was invite him in. And let me tell you, with, uh, with my, 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 my uh, English, uh, simple English, the presence of God came, and God ministered to us all. And his name was glorified. In other words, it's just talking to them. That's praying in the spirit. In other words, praying from your heart. Praying from your heart. And when you're out of words, you moan and groan. And, and God understands that too. How many say amen? You ever, you ever run out of words and you oh, 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 God. Oh, God, did you know he understands better than you what that oh, God, help me mean? In that oh, there's a bunch of stuff in there that you can't even put into words. Man, I can't tell you how many times I've been in desperate straits and I didn't have words. How about if, have you ever been in, in the presence of God and, and I've been so needy that all you could do is weep? You know, God understands that language. That's his favorite language, I think, in my opinion. Yeah. Tears. He understands tears, boy. If he sees that, that he responds because he knows there's a heart rendering going on. God is a God of the heart. He's not a God of... Remember what he said about the, 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 the Pharisees? These people worship me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. So when you pray, God is really listening to your heart, not to your words so much. What is your heart? Where's your heart at? Is your heart in what you're saying, or are you just talking out of your mouth? Amen? Amen. A spiritual war of praise in the Spirit. It says, pray in the Spirit on all occasions. So a spiritual war warrior also prays on all occasions, not just sometimes, not just at dinner. On all occasions. Whatever's going on, good, the good, the bad, and the ugly. You pray on all occasions. The thing's good. Good, pray and thank God. Are things bad? Pray and ask God to help you. Are things ugly? Ask the peace of God to come and swallow up the ugly. How many say amen? amen. A, prayer, a, a spiritual warrior is alert. It says, with this in mind, be alert. About what? About himself. About yourself. How, how are you? Where, where's your life at? About others. Be alert about the enemy. How many know the enemy is, is after you? If you pay attention and alert, you will see where he's coming from and what he's trying to do. I saw it today. In many instances, he was trying to distract me from the task at hand. But if you are prayerful, you'll be able to see it. You also have to be alert to the truth because that's essential to, see, to allow you to see things separately from the reasoning of your mind. Did you know that one of the things that stops us from what God wants to do in God's will is the reasoning of our mind? Your mind will reason that it can't be so. If you're facing an impossible situation, your mind will reason that it's impossible. So forget about it. But God wants you to go past your reason and go into something called faith to believe God because God is uh, a God of the impossible. The impossible doesn't stop God. The impossible stops us. So we have to stop dead in our tracks. God works best in the impossible because that's when we know it's him and he gets all the glory. God is not interested in what I can do. God is interested in what he can do in me and through me to his glory, the things that I can't do for myself by myself. So you're alert. By the way, the, that alertness of being alert to what God can do past the reasoning of your mind is called revelation. 
You ever have revelation of something impossible or something that you know? Or, you know, it happened well, in many cases with me and my wife. Once when she was sick and we had a revelation that God was in control. How many love that revelation? In other words, I needed that. There's a lot of things going on in our lives when she got sick with breast cancer. And I got revelation, and so did she in prayer. I've got this. We didn't know what that meant. Because that could mean a lot of things. But I could tell you this. It's always good. And God always gets glory from it. And that revelation carried us through. God's with you. He has not left you. So a prayer, spiritual warrior, prays in the spirit, prays on all occasions, is alert, and prays for others. It says, always keep on praying for the Lord's people. And we're going to do that tonight. God loves when we pray for other people. He himself prays for other people. And as a matter of fact, in Hebrews, it, the Bible talks about Jesus, the high priest, is praying for you right now. I always, that always helps me too. You know, when I'm feeling a certain way or I'm feeling weak and I'm reminded that Jesus is praying for me, oh, my goodness. You know what? I love, I, you know what? If you guys pray for me and when you tell me that you pray for me, I want to tell you that that's not just a little phrase. Oh, that's not. That means the world to me. That's the best thing you can tell me, that you're praying for me. And guess what? I'm praying for you as well. As God brings, you know, the faces to my mind and as, as I'm praying uh, to the Lord, I begin to pray and cry out for many, many people here as I know people are crying out for me. I love that. That's powerful. That's how God sustains us. You know, I was on my way on, uh, yesterday with my wife and something weird happened to the car. It's a car that we just got about a month ago and it, it looked like, you know, we, we won't be able to go another mile and we pulled off and we checked. And there didn't seem anything wrong. We took off. And again, we had to pull off. And it was raining, so we pulled off on an underpass. And it was nothing. And I checked the wheels. It, sound, it felt like we were having a flat or multiple. It was just weird. And so I checked. And then I got back in. And all of a sudden, it was fine. And I didn't say anything to her. But on the trip back, I said to her, did you, did you think that maybe God delayed us for a reason? Maybe there was something that was going to happen further up at a certain time, and God made me pull off. I mean, I, I think like that, okay? I believe since I have entrusted my life into God's hand that nothing is random. You know, so instead of cursing at the car or kicking wheels, you know, God, I'm in your hands. What do you want me to do here? You know, I'm checking it out. You want me to go? You want me to stop? We were heading to a destination. It was an hour and a half away. Should we continue? Should we stop? You know, what is God saying? And as it was okay, we were able to continue, but we were delayed. Who knows what that delay meant? But I trust that God knew exactly why we needed to be delayed. How many say amen? amen. So when you pray for others, that's an important thing. God loves that and uh, talks about it. As we uh, read Job's story, when did God bless him again with the double portion of what he had before? It was when he prayed for his friends. That's what the Bible says. Look it up. So uh, uh, going from worry to being a warrior, first pray. Secondly, be thankful to God. Philippians 4. Verse 6, the second part, tell God what you need and thank him for all that he has done. A heart of thanksgiving to Christ Jesus changes your perspective from pessimism to hope. And a spiritual warrior is full of hope. You cannot keep him down. Let me tell you something. Being thankful makes you continually aware that God is with you. You ever see a thankful Christian? The first thing he's thankful about is be, you become aware that God is with you. He said he would be with you, but guess what? If you want to forget that for a good amount of time, start to grumble and complain about whatever circumstance you're in. You won't be thinking about God. You won't remember that he's with you. You won't even remember to ask him anything because you've gotten into a grumbling and complaining spirit. But when you're thankful... 
It makes you aware of God. That's why he wants us to always give thanks. When you're thankful, it helps you to see past your circumstance to the purpose of your circumstance. When you have entrusted yourself to the Lord, the circumstance is there for a reason. But don't get stuck on the circumstance. But if you're thankful, God, I don't know why I'm going through this, but thank you that you do. I trust you. And I believe Romans 8, 28, for he works all things together for the good of those who love him and that are called according to his purpose. While I don't understand this circumstance, I thank you that you do, and there's a reason for it, and you're going to bring me in, out, or through it to the praise and glory of your matchless name. Be thankful. Being thankful helps you to focus on God rather than your circumstance. You want to focus on God? Be thankful. Being thankful is one of the keys to submitting to God's will. It just changes the spirit inside of you. It makes you submissive to God's will. Why is that so good? Believe me, trust me, I'll say it again and again. God's will is where you want to be. There's no better place to be on the face of the earth than in the will of God for your life. You'll come into your purpose, into your calling. You will feel the sense of, I'm okay, even when circumstances around you are screaming no, you're not. But you are okay. How many know what I'm talking about and can testify? Right? When the storm is raging, right? As long as Jesus is in the boat, the storm is raging. But guess what? You're okay. That's why when Jesus was sleeping and there was a storm and they woke him up, hey, wake up, wake up. You're going to let us drown. And he got up. He says, oh, you have little faith. Why did he say that? I mean, there was a storm. The boat was being tossed about. But think of it. Jesus is God in the flesh. Do you think he was going to drown? Or do you think a boat that was carrying him was going to tip over? It's an impossibility. So wherever you are with Jesus, you're in the safest place known to man. How many say amen? amen. And finally... Being thankful keeps your joy intact. Thankful people are joyful people. You ever been around people who instead of being thankful complain about everything? You ever been around them for a minute? How's that feel? Huh? If you, if you, if you walked into that situation with some joy, right? Why am I even alive after <laughs> being with, <laughs> with somebody like that? But when, when you see a thankful person, they're joyful. They've gotten in on the secret that God is God, is our Heavenly Father, and always takes care of us. You know why that's so important? Nehemiah 8.10 says, the joy of the Lord is your strength. So how are you going to be a warrior without any strength. You want to be a warrior, you need joy. You want joy, you have to be thankful. That's why the Bible says, give thanks when? Always. In everything, give thanks. Amen? So here's the two secrets so far from the word of God, how to become, go from being a warrior to a warrior. Pray. Be thankful to God. And finally, live in Christ Jesus. The second half of Philippians chapter 4 of the scripture that we read says this. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. What does that mean? It's, it's very simple, actually. To live in Christ Jesus means that Christ is our focus. He is your goal. He is your one desire, chief desire. He's the center point of your mind. He's the center point of your heart. He's the center point of your body. He's the center point of your soul. Everything that you do, you do for his glory. Does that sound radical to you? That's because it is. That's the takeover that God intends for your life. And that takeover takes over my sinful nature, 
that inside of me will lead me to destruction. That's why when I finally got that, it took me a while as a Christian to get that. Because, you know, you try to still do things in your own way. You try to test the waters, use God for some things, and some things you're out on your own because, you know, you know what you're doing. I don't need to ask God about that decision. That's an easy one. I'll just go over here. Right? And then you go over there and, oh, my goodness, what did I do? Right? But it's, it's, it's all encompassing. In other words, Jesus means to take over your heart, your mind, your soul. But here's the thing about it. You don't become a zombie. When God takes over, he enhances who you are. It doesn't take away. You know, I was talking to a, a, a couple uh, on Sunday night, and we were talking about that the, the, the Bible says the Lord gives and the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Job said that. But, you know, I used to pray that, and then one day kind of got God stopped me. And we usually pray that when something bad happens, the Lord gives and the Lord takes away. But God is a giver. God is a good God. He doesn't take away something to see you suffer. He, when would he ever do that? So I realized God gives. How many are so thankful that God gives? What he takes away is the things that you don't need. The things that will destroy you, the things that are keeping you from him, the things that are keeping you from his will, the things that are keeping you from his holiness, yes, he will take that away for your good. Amen. So now when you think of the Lord gives and he takes away, say, thank God that he takes away. There's so many things that he took away from me, and I'm standing here free tonight because of the many things that he took out of me. Thank God that he takes away. What doesn't belong and gives us his righteousness. Amen? Amen. Listen, I'm going to read two scriptures and then we're going to pray. Here's, here, here's what encompasses everything that I'm saying in Colossians chapter 1, 15 to 18. Listen to how the totality of who Jesus is. The Son is the invisible image, or is the image of the invisible God. Timmy, if you'd come. The firstborn over all creation. For in him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. And he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning and the firstborn from among the dead, so that in everything he might have the supremacy. Amen. You know, is that screaming? God, Jesus first, Jesus first, Jesus first, Jesus first in your life. Jesus supreme in your life. Did you realize that all things have been created by him, through him, and for him? That includes me and you. I was created by God for God. That's why I need him so much. Listen, you can reject that statement and you can say, I don't need God. I know a lot of people like that. And you know what? I'm so glad I don't walk in their shoes. Whether we like it or not, we were made for God. The only time that your soul and your spirit finds rest and peace is when you find your way to him or when he finds you, better put. When he reveals himself to you and you realize who he is and he starts giving your heart the revelation that you need a savior. Do you remember that moment? Do you remember when you realized and your eyes were open, the scales came off? One day you didn't know and all of a sudden one day your eyes were open and you asked Christ to come into your heart and then everything changed everything your whole world was turned on its ear and then God starts working with you it becomes a process a refining process he's never done with us he's still working on me and you know what he has full access now because I don't, I don't fight him anymore I used to fight him without knowing, resisting the change. But what was I resisting? I was resisting hanging on to what caused my own death. 
Now I let it go. Lord, whatever you want, whatever you, you know what? I, I am living the life. Do I have a lot of money? No. Do I have fancy cars and big house? No. Do I have to sometimes figure out how to do things so I can get everything in order and get everybody the money that they need? Yes. But I am a rich man. I am a rich man. God saved our marriage many years ago. And I can enjoy a relationship like the Bible talks about and love my wife like Christ loved the church. And I have two boys. And they're up here. Well, I have four. The other two are my adopted sons. They're always together. Guess what? To see young people serving the Lord with all of their heart, what can you give me in this world that could take the place of that? Or what can you pay me that would equal the treasure of seeing your children and the children that God gives you serving God with all of their heart and walking the road that leads to righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit instead of out there losing their mind and possibly losing their life. Oh, many of you are rich and don't even know it. Many of you, the treasure is there and you got to get it. Because God gave it to you already. But you got to give him everything. Listen to Colossians 3, verse 4, and I'll end with this. And when Christ, what are the next words? Who is your life? is revealed to the whole world, you will share in all his glory. When Christ, listen to what it's supposed to be like for you and for me. When Christ who is your life. It's not, he's a part of your life. He's not something that you do once a week or a person in your life. Or, listen, the Bible says he is your life. You know what that means? Without him, you don't have life. And some of you here, or all of us here, who at one time didn't have him, how many can testify that that is not living? Raise your hand high if you know that. Not having him is not living, it's existing. But today, you have life. But you need to make him your life. You want to be a warrior? Live your life in Christ. Speak to him. Pray. Do everything you can on all occasions. Pray and believe that he'll answer. And be thankful. You know, I'll tell you one thing. You know what keeps me thankful? What keeps me thankful is knowing how, knowing the truth, I still messed up. Anybody here can keep me company in that club. You knew the truth, and you still messed up. Not once, not twice, not three times. God, I'll never do that again. This is it. Join the line. Day later. Oh, you know. But guess what? We're here, aren't we? God didn't get rid of us and say, you know what, forget you, next. No, he said, no, you? Oh, no, you. Yeah, you. You're going to serve me. You're going to give glory to my name, and I'm going to get glory from your life. Especially you, especially me, because you know. So no matter how long I live and what little I can do for Christ, I am forever grateful. I am forever grateful. I cannot pay him back. Thank God I'm not required to pay him back. Thank God it's a gift. I receive the gift, and the gift is not just for me. It's for you too. So listen, what's the message tonight? Let's stop wasting time worrying. Listen, we're all the same.
we have issues, we have problems, we have situations and circumstances. Memorize that verse. Quote it a hundred times a day if you need to. Let's, let's forget the worry because it does absolutely zero to help us anyway. Let's listen to what Jesus said. Don't worry about tomorrow. It's enough trouble of its own. Be a warrior instead. Your life will be different. Pray. Listen, pray. Talk to God out of your heart. Like we talk to each other. Talk to God is as simple as that. From your heart, pray in the Spirit. Be thankful. Don't ever take for granted what Jesus did for you. Ever, 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 ever. Don't ever forget. We tend to forget. And then make Jesus your life. The entire thing, if you don't, you miss out. You just so miss out. I, I miss, I wish I had the, could get the years back that I blew. Boy, if I could get those years back, but that's okay. With Christ, he puts you on turbo charge to make up. <laughs> yeah, turbo charge for Christ, amen? Let's bow our heads and close our eyes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord is speaking to your heart tonight and you've done more worrying than being a warrior and you want God to just give you more revelation that's what it takes him showing you revealing himself to you in new ways he loves to do that I'm just going to ask you to stand I want to pray for all of us that are feeling that prompting in your heart God is speaking to you you want to be done with worry you want to be a warrior for Christ? I'm going to wait a moment. our confession, Lord God. We need you. That's our confession, oh God. Lord, we realize we can't do anything without you. We believe you now. You said it. You told us that apart from you, we could do nothing, God. We believe that now. We can't even stop worrying, oh God. We can't even do that. But God, I'm praying for your supernatural power to rest on each and every person that has stood up, oh God. Lord, desiring, oh God, to com be converted from a warrior to a warrior, oh God. Lord, I'm so thankful that your word says, oh Lord God, that your power is made perfect in weakness, oh God. So for the qualifications for a warrior is that we would recognize our weakness, oh God, and then cry out to you so that your power can rest on us, oh God. When we are weak, then we are strong, Oh, Lord God, that's what your word tells us, Lord Jesus. So, God, I pray for some conversions here tonight. Not from darkness into light. We're in the light, God. But a conversion from a warrior to, to a warrior to a warrior, oh God. A spiritual warrior, oh God. Able, oh God, to take command of situations in the name of Jesus. God, with the faith to move mountains, oh God. With the faith, oh God, to face anything that comes at us in this world. Lord God, knowing, Lord God, that you're with us. And if you're with us, oh God, who or what can be against us, Lord God? Fill us, our hearts with faith, oh God. Lord, where we're, we're lacking anything. God, fill up in us what is lacking, oh God. Lord, give us that revelation, Lord, of making you everything in our lives, oh God. Not a part of our heart, not a part of our life, oh God, but our very life that the air we breathe, oh God, would be your presence, oh God, because you live in us, Lord Jesus. Oh God, help us, Father. Help us, Lord. We just don't want to be warriors, oh God. Lord, uh, to do uh, things for our own lives. But Lord, we want to be able to fight the good fight for others as well, oh Lord God. We want to be able to fight the good fight for our families, oh God. We want to be able to fight the good fight for our friends, oh God. We want to be able to fight the good fight for our co-workers, many of who don't know you, Lord Jesus. Lord, we want to be able to fight the good fight wherever, God, it is that you place us, oh God 
want you to get glory from our lives, oh God. From us, Lord God, leaving behind those things, oh God, that we will worry about. Instead, Lord God, asking you and running to you for everything, Lord Jesus. God, here we are. Help us, oh God. Lord, we've, I've never seen the righteous forsaken or the poor begging bread, oh God, when anyone who cries out to you, Lord Jesus. And tonight, here we are, God. We're not ashamed. We're not ashamed, oh God. Lord, we're not ashamed to say that we are desperately needy for you, oh God. Oh, how we need you, Lord. How we need you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Empower us, oh God. Empower us, oh God, to be spiritual warriors, oh God, in this life, oh Lord God, to bring glory and honor to your name. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Would you grab somebody's hand right